Why, hello there, and welcome back to the Message Marketing Pod. I'm your host, Christopher Malotti from Malotti Media, and this is episode 124, The Art of Articles, and the difference between spam and quality content in a world of average and AI. Now, this one's a really good topic, everyone, so have it, definitely have a good listen. The reason why is simple. People everywhere and every day are searching high and low for quality content. And the reality is this is a really powerful topic for so many businesses and so many brands to get right. I heard a few people recently say from overseas, the content marketing rules have not changed despite all the digital evolution that we've been through lately, you know, with AI and all of this sort of thing going on and people spamming SEO content, the rules have not changed. In the end, the person that we're trying to please are our customers or our target audience. And the ones, the information that they like, acknowledge and want is the one, the pieces that stand out. And the problem that we're having today with businesses is is that with AI and all these easier options is that it's too tempting to create average content. And this is the biggest caution I'm trying to tell every business. As a content marketer and a copywriting strategist and message marketer is I'm always saying to businesses, you don't get noticed with Wikipedia AI generic stuff. Of course, you can get more advanced and all that, but really what it comes down to is the best type of content is taken from the mouths of the experts and the key opinion leaders documented and written in an engaging way. You have to have all those ingredients if you want to now see results from content marketing. Gone are the days where you could just put whatever you want up. Like I'm seeing a lot of companies all over the world just going to AI and just spamming out stuff and going tick box, right? And then they're going, why isn't it getting results? And look, if you look at Neil Patel, he's done a full analysis in America of like AI generated content versus human content. And what people are finding is that, and what the results are showing is that AI content is getting ignored by search engines and ignored by people. And it's not because AI is flawed. I mean, it is, but it's not, I'm not attacking AI. It's because the problem that we're having is it's too generic. You know, people have read all the generic stuff, what people are looking for, what your audience. So for everyone listening, listen to this, what your audience wants are the real deep insights. You know, they want industry insights and they want, you know, all that information that really is more advanced than generic stock standard Wikipedia stuff. And so that is what gets noticed by search engines and your audiences alike. If you want content marketing to work, you need to think beyond the generic. You need to be thinking, what can I offer that no one has seen, right? Seasonal content is really fantastic. Key opinion leadership content that is all about your insights and knowledge is really working. The five tips, but not going to AI and going, give me five tips and I'll just write about it. It's about going deeper, you know, like what is relevant right now to your audience and the market right now? You know, what trends are going on that you can speak about? That is what will get your website showing up more. Okay. So I hope that three minute rant has helped you already, but let me give, let me go a little bit deeper. Let's take an example. Think of an article that you've read this week, like anything you've read in the last few weeks. Now, I bet you're probably thinking, gosh, I can't even remember right? And that's it's very, very common, especially for the generic stuff. And the reality is that people today are still searching, despite what you might think about short attention spans, people are still looking for longer form content, such as blogs and articles. But the difference is that they will only stick around if it is highly valuable. So blogs, I always say, blogs are not dead. It, they're far from dead if you look at Google's research, but it has to be written well. When written well, they are excellent SEO magnets, perfect for communicating compelling messages and setting yourself up as industry leaders. But I'm putting the emphasis on written well because there's a lot of average out there. If you think about it, I've heard like 1% create and 99% consume, right? We hear that all on LinkedIn. But on top of that 1%, there's probably 15% that are actually good. So think about all the LinkedIn posts that you've read this week, right? Think about, like I always look through LinkedIn and I always have a bit of a chuckle because I think, wow, like this is a bunch of, like this is just beige wall after beige wall. It's like someone going, guys, it's all about the hustle. Make sure you're hustling. And you think, yep, yeah, I've read that 15 years ago. I don't need you to reiterate it. What actually stops people is when people are saying, guys, this is happening or there's a trend here or I've seen this work. One of the recent posts I did that I said, 
it all, you know, objection handling pages on our service pages have been really effective. Come and have a look and see what we've done and, you know, get the insights from what we've done. And that was incredibly well received. So many people like actually contacted me and asked for assistance with this. So do you see the difference? And unfortunately, that generic is only getting worse from AI copywriting. Again, not attacking AI, but what I'm trying to say here is that it's too tempting for businesses and brands to get a marketing associate to just go, write me a blog about pairing wine and cheese. And it comes up with something generic and they go, yeah, that's good enough. We're a good alcohol brand and they post it. And the problem is, is that it's the same thing that it's scraped from Wikipedia and 17 other competitors. What really matters is if you are a wine and cheese company is getting the sommelier and the cheese expert in and asking them, you know, what's an unusual combination? You know, what kind of cheeses are you seeing having the most flavor right now? What wines are trending? And you know, what questions are people asking about that? Do you see? So apply this to your own industry because in the end, articles are the backbone of content marketing. And the reason why is this is because People still like to read and it doesn't matter. It's in different forms. So right now I'm recording this podcast off the insights I wrote from an article, right? Do you see how it, articles are the backbone of content marketing? Think of it in other ways. Like all the voice search material comes from your articles. All the stuff that AI is getting is coming from articles. So articles are still the backbone of content marketing. So that's why search engines rank them so high. And of course your readers are looking for it. But in saying so, today, Google and search engines and readers are pickier when it comes to articles. And so, but this is good news, right? I want to inspire you. This is great news for you because it's an opportunity to stand out effectively with branded content. And remember, I do this every single week. So I know this firsthand. I know the blogs that rank well are the ones that are really bespoke, interesting, and really compelling. So I look at my target audience and I ask myself, what do they want to know right now that they actually care about? And I make it really niche and you can too. So even, you know, like even that average, as average marketing content overflows online, there's an opportunity for you to step up your articles and stand out and it will happen. So despite what everyone else is doing and the competitors and all that, it really is quality of uh, quantity. And if you think about it, think about your customer, put your customer hat on. Do you want to read rubbish? No. Okay. So let's quickly talk about it. So articles, which can also be called blogs or key opinion leader pieces or, you know, anything like similar to that are amongst the most popular and effective forms of long Firm, form content. Businesses publish on their websites to share fresh insights on topics that are, that their target audience will be interested in, right? And so HubSpot and all these companies are doing research all the time. Um, you know, like six, I read somewhere recently that six million blogs are posted daily, right? And the best blogs are the ones that help improve SEO ranking, drive organic traffic, engage and educate audiences and inspire your leads to convert. But it's really important to look at what people are actually looking for. So, so articles are content marketing gold mines. And I know this for the truth, because if you think about it, when you produce an article, as I said, there's many opportunities for you to be doing like things like you can make social media captions out of them, like multiple. Like I know when I do a blog, I snip them up into seven or eight different social media captions and posts and things like that, and then share the blog as the, the big overarching umbrella. And then you can use that in many ways. Like I said, do a video, do a podcast on it, etc. So let's have a look at like why you get results, right? So unfortunately today, most people do articles now as a tick box, right? And then they wonder why, why isn't anyone reading my articles? Why am I not getting results? Now you're, the best articles should be getting people staying on there between three to eight minutes. And I know many of my most popular blogs, people stay on there for like 26 minutes. And so what I, that's a judge on how long I think that and how quality the blog is. So the answer to this is simple. Blogs that earn results are those that are carefully written and specifically designed to outshine all the spam out there. And because both Google and human readers are overwhelmed by the influx of generic content, they're raising their standards. And so they should. And so when Google detects that your content is more on the generic side, typically like AI generated or just, you know, scraped from other places, naturally their system does not prioritize it and your content won't rank well. In the same way, your human readers appreciate personalized nuanced content. And it's all about like getting their like real engagement. So back to article quantity and quality. I mean, I always say both really. And I know that sounds like a bit selfish, but it's true. It's always quality over quantity. But if you can do both, then that really helps. Like for instance, when my business goes quiet, usually it goes quiet every so often. And it's usually for a week. What I do is I get all of my writers to be pumping out content, but it's not just, hey, let's find 17 generic topics. What I do is I research the market. 
my customers, my competitors, and what's trending, what's going on now, what's at the time of the year. And I look at what people are actually searching for, and that's how I find the best content. Because then I can create it, and I know that it's full of good keywords and good information that people actually want to read. Because remember, the best article is about delivering value, not just sharing content for the sake of it. Okay, so there are many benefits to sharing this quality content. So like, I mean, the first thing is, of course, superior quality blogs earn your audience engagement and customer loyalty, right? So you make people feel that you value them enough to put in the effort and create content especially for them. That's how you win customers, okay? And we've done this with many, many brands where it's proven that every time we write some really quality blog in a couple of you know pieces that their website traffic you know, doubles, triples, quadruples, okay? Number two of the benefits is uh, great articles give you industry leadership and key opinion leadership status or credibility, right? So if you're sharing stuff that's at the forefront of your industry and your space, people go, oh, wow, that business or that brand or that person is really, really good. And so like try answering questions based on your expertise and and prompt people to ask more questions. That's how we get, you know, quality blogs. So when I work with clients, what I do is I interview them and I guide them. So I don't just go, oh, tell me a topic and I'll just write it for you. That's what AI does, right? What multimedia, what we do is we interview you like, and we sit down with you and we say, okay, what do people want? to know and often a client and I want you to take this from knowledge is what do you take for granted that your customers wouldn't right and I guarantee 98% of what you know is you would take for granted that people wouldn't know right that want to know not I'm not saying superfluous information so that's why when I write blogs and articles I speak to the key opinion leaders and the people who are experts in the business and I say what is it that like what do the people want to know right now you know is there something about cybersecurity or cash flow or interest rates or potential recessions or how to use their super better but not just here's a generic article on superannuation it's all about saying like here's five things that the average Australian doesn't know about protecting their super when they're in their 20s imagine how many clicks that would get. Another benefit is well-written content drives actual measurable long-term results. And I know this firsthand with my own brand and many, many of my clients is while most complain that generic blogs rarely get traction, great human written blogs actually last a long time. And I know this, one of my SEO team members, I know that one of our Christmas blogs, I wrote something like six years ago, ranks incredibly well every single time from around October to January, every single year. Okay, so it just goes to show. And so you can enjoy all these benefits and more if and only if you put in the work and write blogs that stand out amongst all the generic AI written or the generic content out there. So how do we write them? Okay, so let's give you a quick example and then we'll finish up. Okay, so how can you write those winning articles? Number one is start by understanding your audience. What do my readers want to know right now? Okay, now I know you might be thinking, oh, that's pretty easy, but it's it's not always that easy. It's, you know, I always default to FAQs, right? What are they, what, you know, go to your sales team and go to your customer service team or go to your marketing team and go, what questions do customers keep asking us? And it might be the most random thing. It doesn't matter as long as it's customer orientated. So it could be, when does something expire? Or what do I do if this happens? Those kind of blogs are the ones that rank. And if you're answering those questions, you're driving people up the loyalty ladder, right? They're customers customers and leads and prospects and people are coming to you rather than your competitors, okay? Number two is pick topics that spark conversation, okay? So like, you know, anything that you want, like we talked about FAQs and, and you know, industry events and upcoming, you know, trends, all these kind of things people are hunting for. So what can you do to contribute? And don't think this is another thing is the trap is, oh, my opinion doesn't matter. Rubbish. People love when you say things, be involved, right? They might not agree, but if you're at the forefront of it and you've got an expert opinion about something, then people will want to know, okay? Number three, very overlooked, but very important, is follow a great article structure, right? So for instance, a big, big heading, right, with a hook, then a catchy and relatable intro and clearly contextualize your topic and then start with the why, why people should read and why it's important and then go to the how to and end with a powerful call to action. I always say, and have a look at one of my blogs, it's called Content is an Upside Down Triangle, the importance of good flow in your articles and content because it needs to be that kind of flow. Number four is then don't just post and hope for the best. Share your blog in all the right places, LinkedIn and all those kind of platforms and things. People like to find it. They won't go hunting most of the time, right? And number five, 
don't forget to monitor your results, okay? This is really important with articles is that we don't always get it right. Remember, there's a lot of subjectivity and a lot of things that we're trying and not trying. So if you aren't checking the results through Google Analytics and all of your website stuff, then it's really hard to know what's working and what's not. And we want to be focusing more on what's working. Like it's not A-B testing per se, but what it is, is like look at what articles trend, what people stay for. And then what you can do is the best part is follow-ups. You know, for instance, if you write a blog about how copywriting can help medium-sized businesses succeed with their branding, and it does really, really well, then what I typically do is I check and I go, wow, people are reading or staying on this for 23 minutes. It's obviously a hot topic. So what I'll do is I'll create some follow-ups. Like it might be how medium-sized businesses can benefit their brands and you know, what medium-sized businesses need to know about you know, brand extensions and things like that. And then you go to the original blog and hyperlink it to this new one. But you can only do that when you know what's working and what's not, okay? So it's really important to check the results and see what's working. So remember, in a world of generic, be different, okay? In a world of spam, take the time to work. It is better to have that one article that really trends well than 17 articles that are average and don't get any results, right? Time is too precious. Expertise and resources are too precious to waste it on dribble, okay? Spend the time to get it really right and get that one article great rather than 17 articles that are just boring, right? And the reason why is simple. They won't trend. They won't rank. No one will ever find them if they're 17, you know, behind the first ones. Whereas one that's different, fresh, unique, top of trend, seasonal, all of that will start to rank and will do well for you. So if you need help, as usual, contact us at Malotti Media. You can go to our website at malottimedia.com.au or email us at enquire, E-N-Q-U-I-R-E, at malottimedia.com.au and we can discuss your article needs. We can write them for you. We can interview you, as I said. We can do all of that for you so that you actually get articles that work for you rather than just generic stuff that you've got your poor, you know, marketing assistant to do every week just because you should, right? So contact us at Melody Media. Thank you so much for listening to episode 124, The Art of Articles. I'm Chris from Melody Media and please subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.